Okay, just just in case you guys don't believe that we're actually here with Ramona Robinson, we're going to do a quick teaser. As you can see, we actually are here with Ramona. Hi, Ramona. Hello. How are you, Kevin? I'm doing good. We're going to be right back. We just we did a teaser just to let you know that we are here with Ramona. You've seen all of the things. We got Miss Travion squeezing in there. We're going to be actually back to sit down and talk to uh, Ramona in a little while to talk about her book and all the other things that she has going on. And the reason that she is here, please come down. You know where we're at. We're in Shaker Square at Fashions by Fowler. Come see us. Come see Ramona. Get your book signed. Take a picture with her. So let's talk. Let's talk. Come on by. And we need uh, men to come also because this book, I wrote it for women, but it's really resonating with men also because there are stories in here about um, some men behaving badly. And so you need for your young man to read this to know the appropriate ways to respect women. Okay, guys, you heard that from Mona Robinson herself. So, brothers, Mona invited you down. I know I invited you down, but it probably really didn't count until until Ramona Robinson invited you down, but we'll be right back. Let's get it. Cleveland told chill, they missed the old chill. So I went back to the old school and brought back the old chill. That radio show chill, Mr. 40 Below chill. We gon' remix, rebrand, and reload chill. I'm like Donnie Hathaway, but in a rapping way. Y'all gon' clap today for what I have to say. Okay, right now, as you can see, myself and Miss Travion, we are here, as you know, at Fashions by Followers, Shaker Square. We're talking to lots of people here, all here to see the one and only Ramona Robinson, and she's doing a signing of her new book. A dirt road to somewhere. Okay. And we have movie tickets to give away, but you must share this page. I'm not giving anybody a movie ticket unless I go and look and see that you shared the page. Right now, we're about to toss to a promotional piece to let you know a little bit about what made Ramona write this book, what the book is all about. I want you to watch this. We're going to come back and we're going to actually sit down and talk with Ramona Robinson. But right now, you will see Miss Ramona Robinson talking about her book, A Dirt Road to Somewhere. Hello, I'm Ramona Robinson, author of A Dirt Road to Somewhere. My book was born out of many conversations I had with women and young girls about how I achieved my goals. Many of them have heard me say I was six years old when I told my mother I wanted to become a journalist. And the road I traveled was not easy. I grew up in the backwoods of rural Missouri with nothing, dirt poor, on a dead-end dirt road. And my mom used to always say that this road may lead to nowhere, but you are going somewhere. Okay, as you can see right now, as we promised, we are here with Ramona Robinson. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Kevin. How are you? I am fine. Now, as you all know, we've been promoting this for a while. She's here doing a book signing of her new book. A Dirt Road to Somewhere. Okay, what, what, what was the impetus? What made you decide to write this book? Well, Kevin, I started writing this book 10 years ago, if you can believe that. Wow. Okay. Uh, but I was so busy with my demanding career. Right now, I'm still the primary anchor at Cleveland 19 News. Uh, I used to do the 11 o'clock, but recently um, I pulled back my hours, and I'm now doing the 4 and 6 o'clock news. So this gives me time to finally publish this book, and uh, glory be to God. I'm, I'm just so thankful that I'm able to testify um, and basically let people see my faith walk and how I walked in faith and not fear, despite all of the obstacles I had to endure. I think sometimes people have uh, preconceived notions about you. They look at you and they see, oh, there's a woman. She's polished. She's got it together. She has on nice clothes, great hair, makeup. And no one knows 
the uh, shoes I've walked in. Okay. You didn't see the hurt, the pain, the loss, the the betrayal, the backstabbers, the naysayers, all the, the hate. Not having a job at a point, not knowing how you're going to pay your bills, if you're going to lose your house or not, not knowing if you're going to get another job, being stuck in a dead end job. You want to be promoted, you're not promoted. Maybe somebody who has lesser credentials than you actually get the job, and so you deal with all of those issues coming out of school. Um, you know, having a school debt and not knowing how things are going to, you know, dealing with bad relationships, men behaving badly. Uh, but you will see in this book, my journey, how I dealt with all of those issues. Okay. Now, and, and as you're right, as you went through many of those things, we see you, you're a, a public person. Uh, we see you on the news and we've seen you for quite some time now. <laughs> almost and we, 30 years. And almost 30 years. And we would not expect that you have had a lot of those trials and tribulations. So we're glad that you wrote the book for that purpose. Now, quickly tell me, who is this book meant for? Who, who was your audience intended when you wrote this well, book? Well, Kevin, I'm glad you asked that because when I started writing this book, it was born out of so many questions from not just young women, but uh, some women who are 40 and 50 years old, and they said, you know, I've been stuck in this career or I'm just at a crossroad in my life. I'm not sure which way to turn. I, I majored in something in school and I don't have a passion for it. Um, you know, I'm in an IT job but what I really I'm interested in nursing or and and they said you seem to have it so together can you give me some advice so I kept having people ask for advice I thought I'm gonna put it all down um, you know on paper and I'm gonna give advice to women but you know what has happened so many men have said to me thank you for writing your journey right. and telling your story because you will see in this book how um, Wow. You know, I don't name names necessarily. Well, some names I do. Okay, some names do get <laughs> some, named, right? Some names okay, do get named. Okay, because we do want some but, names. But you'll see um, um, one of the top NBA players in this country, he's no longer playing now, um, he locked me in a room and attempted to violate me. And you'll see how yeah. I was able to get out of that situation. But I wrote that story and so many others um, as a lesson, a cautionary tale to women. Uh, and it seems so cliche, but don't judge a book by its cover. Because I know, because I sit next to sports and I love sports. And so I know the guys who are married with the beautiful wife and the children who, you know, are running around cheating. <laughs> I hear the stories mm -hmm. that never get aired. So I'd never heard anything bad about this guy. So I'm there. There was this innocence about him because I figured well he has to be a good guy and you'll read how he basically tricked me into going into a room with him and you would think okay I'm an intelligent woman I can't be tricked but I was tricked in going to a room but but more importantly than that this book shows issue after issue that I had to deal with all of the roadblocks and how I was over, able to overcome those and get out of that room and free myself. Okay, thank God. Yes. Well, you know what? What I want to do, and, and I, I was glad that you said that this book has also reached out and, and intended to reach out to not only the women, but to the men as well. But you know what? I'm going to get my co-host, Miss Travion, over here. Miss Travion, come over here. Come on because over, Because I want you to do a woman-to-woman -woman talk. Uh, I, I got the brothers covered. We, we, we're going to get them the information that they need. But I, I'm going to let you take this seat and, and, and do a quick woman-to-woman -woman talk with Ramona. How about that? I, love it. I will grant you my seat, Miss <laughs> Travion. It's time for Sister Girls. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm loving our royal blue. Yes. So, Ramona, it's such a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Likewise. Well, thank you. Now, my question is, in the book, you talked about how the men said they were glad that you wrote the book, and it's a lot of things for women, both young and old. What was that part in the book where it got so deep, so personal for you that you said, I don't know if I'm going to, but then you decided to let it all go? Probably uh, in the book, I it's uh, chapter 40. It's called Ramona's Children. Um, and I'm very transparent and I'm very vulnerable and I cried a lot writing it. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, having three miscarriages. All I ever wanted was to be a mom. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'm gonna go again. <laughs> but uh, I get very emotional about it and, and it's a happy emotion even though I cry, but um, it's, 
I think sometimes people look at me and they think, oh, she's got it all, and she's got the great job, and she's got the great husband, and um, but they didn't see the pain of having miscarriages, having to go in front of the camera mm -hmm. and read stories about, oh, there's a baby boom at the Cleveland Clinic and, mm -hmm. and having to smile and knowing the despair and the, the heartache that I was in and going home curling up in a fetal position because I was devastated, not once, not twice, but three times. So wow. I had to really question the God that I serve. Mm -hmm. You know, how could you, all I ever... T all I've ever done is try to serve you. And for 25 years, I, I created Ramona's Kids. All I ever did was love children, try to nurture them and provide them with hope and purpose. And yet he didn't grant me my one wish uh, because all the other stuff I didn't ask for. Yes, I always wanted to be a journalist, mm -hmm. but I, ever, I never asked for fortune and fame. I just wanted to be a journalist, tell great stories. Mm -hmm. That's what I prayed for. And so I just knew children were a given, but because it was important for me mm -hmm. to wait until I was married before I had a family, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I met my husband later in life. Wow. And so, you know, mm -hmm. once a woman is over 35, then, you know, the chances of you getting pregnant naturally mm -hmm. uh, start to diminish. And so that didn't happen. And it was honestly, the thing that brought me back was um, I got an a message on Facebook from an 11 year old Cleveland girl and wow. she just out of the blue she said Miss Robinson I hope you never leave Cleveland because us kids we need you Wow that's powerful and it just it was that that was it it was like God never allowed me to birth children but born mm -hmm. out of that sadness was the reality that wow, I'm making a difference. Absolutely. I'm making a huge difference. These children need me. They're not my own. You know, they're lent to me by Northeast Ohio moms and dads, but mm -hmm. I so appreciate because I get to nurture and talk to them. And sometimes we just laugh and, and kid around, but um, I so appreciate mm -hmm. that part of life because I realize that I'm making a difference in their lives. Wow. And thank you for sharing that. Now we know. Thank you for almost making me lose it. Oh, I started tearing up. I'm like, Ramona, look, I got me a little wet right there myself. I'm like, oh, because I mean, you're just so passionate. You do, you do so much for the children, so much for the community. Now let me ask you, an award-winning journalist, how was it? But some things, as we know, you can't air on the, the TV. Uh -huh. How was it in this writing process to take your journalistic hat on and put on your author hat and say, this is Ramona. We're in a whole nother realm. How? What was that transition for you? It's, it's really tough because uh, one, of the, um, one of the other tough stories was to talk about, um, I talk about child predators, mm -hmm. um, how um, one of my grade school teachers I felt was uh, grooming me mm -hmm. uh, by little touches. And I talk about the things that he did, mm -hmm. clever things that he did. Another cautionary tale for moms and dads mm -hmm. to look for. I remember when I was raising my niece, I raised my niece for... Um, three and a half years and I was I'm like a lot of grandparents or like a lot of um, um, mothers out there and fathers mm -hmm. um, my sister fell on hard times because of drug abuse mm -hmm. and she asked that I take um, her daughter and so I talk about that in the book and um, I forgot my thought <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about but I talk about stories like that where I'm having to be really transparent and open up yeah. about these issues but I feel like it's so important because even before I wrote the story about my sister's drug addiction mm -hmm. I called her to make sure it was okay because I I had left it out of the book I was like I ain't telling all my business and uh -huh. I'm definitely not telling all my family's business uh -huh. and I called my sister and she said Ramona if you're gonna tell my story mm -hmm. then you tell the truth None of that sugar coating of, oh, I took her daughter because she fell on hard times. And she, she said, you tell the truth. Oh. You tell them I chose drugs. Mm. I chose drugs. And my child wow. 
I, I chose drugs over my child and my God. You tell them the truth. And I was like, oh, okay, if you're, wow. if you're certain. You, she said, yeah, because if I can help another young woman out there or young man out Absolutely. there who's struggling right now with drug abuse and they end up losing their children to the system, which is what would have happened to my niece, wow. or maybe mom and dad is keeping them, the grandparents are keeping them. She said, you tell my story. So if I can help one of them get it together mm -hmm. and get their kids back because she said some of them end up in the in the juvenile system, system yeah or even the prison system mm -hmm. because of drugs and she said you tell that story and so when I was telling that story I was so emotional I can um, only because I'm writing about my baby sister and how and I don't want to give away you know the chapter but you know I'm, I just begged her please get off drugs please get off drugs I would do everything for her I bought her a car because she said she going to go finish her college degree. I would give her money because she said if I didn't, she was going to be on the street. Mm -hmm. And then one of her counselors told me, you are the biggest enabler. You are the problem. Wow. You have got to stop giving to her. Wow. She's your, you're her fallback. She knows wow. that she can come to you and she can lie and say, oh, I need this. And she's going to take your money and go and buy drugs. Wow which was the truth. But for me, it's like I'm saving my baby sister. sister. That I don't protective want her. mode kicked yes, in. Yes, wow. it's like that mummy thing. That's my baby sister. I'm not going to let her go hungry. And she's like, she's not going hungry. Wow. She's using your hard-earned dollars to buy drugs. So, again, it's not a tell-all gossipy book. Mm -hmm. It's issues that everyone deals with. I talk about being out of a job, not knowing how I was going to pay my bills. I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of people have been there. I talk about... Um, this is such a timely memoir because I talk about being sent to cover a Ku Klux Klan rally in Charleston, wow. South Carolina, and I was sent out of spite because I believe the woman was trying to get me to quit. And she said, mm -hmm. by the way, I want you to interview the Grand Dragon of the Klan. Wow. And now you know I'd only seen, probably like you, and I, I had only seen the Klan in movies. Well, yeah. And so when I arrive at the rally and there are these men and white robes and some have hoods and some don't have their faces covered mm -hmm. and they're marching uh, white supremacy and are you giving me the rap? I'm in the middle of my story. You see <laughs> Kevin over there? Who's giving me the rap? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know all about rap. They want me to wrap up. Can y'all believe this? Well, guess what? If you all want to find <laughs> more about Ramona's book. book. Now, where else can... Okay, we're here. You're here at Fashion by Fowler today. I'm here at Fashion by Fowler, but you can get this job, uh, this job, this book at Amazon.com, okay. BarnesandNoble.com, or the best place to go if you want it autographed okay. is to go to my website, RamonaRobinson.com, RamonaRobinson.com, and you'll see, go to the events page, and you'll see my calendar, and it's going to be listed where I'm at. I'm going to be at five Cuyahoga County libraries coming up, okay. and I'm going to have a huge public book signing October 29th at the Roxino Northfield Park. All right. <laughs> so come out and see me from 3.30 to 5.30. Well, you know what? In, in lieu of getting fussed by Ramona Robinson for trying to get her to rap, <laughs> but rap. she does have, I, you know, we can have her on Chill Talk all day long, <laughs> but they're telling me that she has books to sign. We have some other teachers here oh, we do that have a want line. to I'm talk so, to her and buy some books. So even though Ramona fussed me, I'm going to make sure she keeps this moving, what she's here to I do. I got more to say, Kevin. But we will be back. We're going to take a 15-minute break at Chill Talk. Ramona has books to sign. You can still get up here to uh, Fashions by Fowler. On, myself. I'm not leaving until the last person has the their book. See what I'm saying? So catch us. We're going to take a 15-minute break, and we will be back live on Chill Talk with myself. It's Travion Love and the one and only Ramona Robinson. Thank Ramona you. Tracy, can I get a piece? <laughs>